Welcome. This video will explain the quickest and safest method of rigging D&B V and Y series line arrays. Let's start with the touring cart. It works the same way for V and Y series and consists of a wheelboard, four poles and a top lid. All components are held together by cam locks, which are easily dismantled with a twist. Both series use a three-point rigging system. There are two front links and a central rigging strand with a hook-type splay link at the rear, which is used to set the splay angles. The splay angles influence the acoustic behavior of a line array and have to be determined in array calc first. Now everything is ready to go. First, undo all rear locking pins. The numbering on the rear rigging strand reflects the angular resolution from 0 to 14 degrees in 1 degree increments. To preset the splay angles, insert one pin per box according to the list of splay angles generated in array calc. In this case, it's 0, 1, 2, and 3 degrees. To attach the flying frame, extend the front links of the top cabinet then check that the front links of the other cabinets are engaged correctly. Both V and Y series flying frames come with two load adapters for hoist connection one load adapter for use with a rotor clamp, two shackles to connect the safety chain, two additional front links for ground stacks and mixed hangs, and a mounting plate for inclinometers. To set a particular pick point, at least one adapter must be mounted to the central bar of the flying frame. This determines the overall tilt of the array. In this case, according to the array calc prediction, the pick point needs to be set to hole number 20. Sometimes higher resolution is required, therefore half-hole detents can also be realized. This is done by rotating the load adapter appropriately and by observing the arrow and numerical markings. So, this is hole number 20. And hole number 20.5 works like that. The easiest way to get the frame out of the case is to use the chain motor. For applications where the chain motor is directly above the frame, it is recommended to use the hoist connector chain, shown here. It will prevent the chain bag from touching the frame. Lower the frame until the front links of the top cabinet fit into the slots at the front of the frame. Then insert the pins on both sides. To lower the splay link of the frame, release the locking pin that keeps it in the park position. Lower the flying frame a bit and gently guide the hook so it engages the rear pin of the uppermost box. Insert the safety pin to make this connection permanent. As the array is pulled out of the cart, the rear link of the frame and all other splay links will interlock with the preset pins automatically. This is the right moment to insert the safety pins into the hole directly below the angle pin.
We'll follow the same process for the next set of four boxes, but this time with display angles of 4, 8, 12 and 14 degrees. Again, the front links of the top box need to be extended and all other front links checked. The first set of cabinets can now be lowered onto the second set. Always be careful to align the front links with the slots precisely. Raise the whole array out of the touring cart. Again, the display links will interlock automatically. Don't forget to engage the remaining safety pins. With the touring cart out of the way, it's time to attach the lower set of boxes at the rear as well. And don't forget the safety pin. The only problem now is an aesthetic one. The hook from the lowest cabinet is sticking out, but there is an easy fix. Just disengage the lowest box briefly, place the hook straight up into its parking position, reattach the splay pin and re-engage it with the box above, and again, don't forget the safety pin.